Welcome back to the Style and Beauty Doctor here on YouTube and in today's video we're going to be talking about skincare products <sighs> that I wasted my money on. Keep watching. Hear me out first as to you know why there are so many <laughs> products in here. So. I am a beauty minimalist and by that I don't mean that you know I wear tinted moisturizer and just put a little bit of you know clear gloss on no honey she likes all of the beauty but she doesn't like owning a lot of products right because owning a lot of products for me turns into more spending it turns into clutter it turns into utter disarray in my life and I already have enough chaos and whatnot going on and I don't have quite that great of an attention span. So having a bunch of things around me makes things worse. However, 2020 <laughs> is quite a funny year. And um, especially during quarantine, and shout out to those of you guys who were here in quarantine watching my videos and you know just hanging out during those uncertain times. I was coming up with a bunch of different things that I wanted to talk about because I was like, you know, let me put out some content, see what people are into, yada yada. And I'm someone who doesn't, you know, stray too far away from my skincare routine. As a matter of fact, you can check out my skincare routine, my basic AF anti-aging skincare routine to, you know, see what that's about. But during quarantine, I was like, you know what? Let me let me buy some weird things from some weird things from Amazon. Let me try some stuff from the ordinary and see how it compares to the products that I already have in my skincare stash. And then what happened was some of the products that I bought, you know, they wound up making it. You you guys saw those as videos and things that I tried out. But there were some things where I was just like, okay, I'll try that out later. Okay, I try that out. I'll try that out later. And it, it's been later like three or four times. And I still ain't touched these. So let's talk about the products that I, I might have kind of wasted my money on, but we'll see. So first up, I said that I was gonna do like this Amazon skincare themed video. So I bought, you know, a number of things. One thing I bought was this Nooney Marshmallow Whip Maker in Baby Pink. So essentially, this is something if I remember from the description correctly, and I'll link this in the description box if it's still available, so you can you know check it out yourself. Essentially, you put a product in here, and you do something, you mix it up, and it turns it into like a, like a whipped kind of product. Um, and I was gonna <laughs> do a video demonstrating that for you, um, but you know n normally when you know we're non quarantine you know, stay in the house um, times, I would not buy a product as such, but I was like, you know what? Do it for the tube. <laughs> Another thing, this is from the same Amazon order. Um, I don't even remember I, what these were. <laughs> I want to say that these are lip exfoliators and your guess is as good as mine as to why I have so many. Maybe that's just how they came. I'll show you these in B-roll. Um, but <laughs> I'm not even, I, I'm a less is more kind of girl when it comes to like skincare and tools. Like I'll try some tools. If lips, I've gone through my phases of loving like, you know, lip scrubs and, you know, special lip sleeping masks and all that jazz. And when I exfoliate my lips, I just take my a wet toothbrush and gently <laughs> massage it across my lips. That's my exfoliator. But I guess I was like, well, you know what? Go on to Amazon and see what comes up. And this came up. I This is my first time even opening it. So I'm just like, girl, get it together. If this is still available, I'll, I'll link it. Anything that I'm showing you, if it's still available, it'll be linked in the description box. So, you know, check that out. Okay, again, from my Amazon order, I don't know why I have two rollers, um, but this one's the Rosalind Boutique uh, Derma Roller Cosmetic Needling Instrument for personal at-home use. So um, 
The basic idea behind derma rolling is, you know, you're taking these little micro needles and they're pricking the skin and it's kind of like, you know, you kind of pinch somebody into action and they just, oh, and they spring up and they do whatever it is that they're supposed to be doing. Well, sometimes it's kind of the same kind of concept, but not really. Um, with the hopes with micro needling, the little needles prick the skin in hopes of, you know, stimulating the skin to produce more collagen, um, for the skin to kind of give like a quick start, a uh, jump start on the skin's uh, self regeneration process. So, these micro needling tools, um, you know, they can give you a number of different benefits. Um, some people are seeing glowing skin. So they have bigger ones that you can use for your body. I've seen people where they've seen some improvement in the way that like loose skin is, is kind of looking. Um, some people have used it for discoloration. Um, there's a number of reasons why people use micro needling. Me, myself, personally, I just kind of feel like y'all should not be out there doing the most at home. <laughs> uh, that's just my school of thought, you know, for me, myself, personally. Because while um, some of you guys out there, you know, you're just like one, <laughs> one notch below becoming a pro yourselves, like you know your skin, you know, you know, things inside and out. Those people I'm not worried about. It's the, the rest of y'all I'm kind of like nervous about. You, you know who you are out there. And I don't love to encourage people to be doing things that I feel like, like girl, just put down the derma roller, pick up the phone and call an esthetician or a dermatologist, both of which should be someone who specialize and have lengthy receipts that they deal with black skin because we just can't be having any old body picking and prodding at our skin. Um, in the description box, I will leave um, a link to an Instagram post that tags some Instagram accounts that um, are resources where you're able to find um, estheticians in terms of color in the US and in the UK as well. So one of my favorite estheticians to follow, Deja. You guys probably already follow her and know her. I'll put her Instagram in the um, description box as well. Uh, but she has a black skin directory in the UK that if you know film my UK watches out there. Anyway, so here's what this looks like. So essentially you roll this on the skin. Now this one, I'm not really, not really feeling anything here. Like it, it doesn't hurt at all. I would be curious because I have lots of scrapes and scratches and discoloration, both on my arms and my legs from a certain someone who tries to hitch rides on, <laughs> on my legs when I'm walking through the apartment. I'd be curious to see if something like this would um, help with that. However, I, I just kind of feel like some of these things, I just want you to see a professional instead. You know what I mean? It, you, it, may be, it may be fine for some of you guys to use at home, but a lot of times some of these at-home devices, because they're being used by the average consumer, they may not be as, as the devices that the professionals are using, and that's a good thing because you're not a professional using these. I just feel like your money sometimes is best well spent going to see an esthetician and or a dermatologist if you have issues with your skin. Now, of course, that is going to be more costly than you know using a device like this. But if you're someone who has no clue of what you're doing, I think that you save yourself a lot of heartache and maybe some money in the long term in trying to fix your skin if you mess yourself up with an at-home device than if you just straight out the gate just went to a professional. So that's that's my thought on that. And then I have this Body Shop one, Revitalizing Facial Roller. Let's open her up. Oh, they're not the same device. Why did I think? I think because they both said roller, I assume that this said derma roller, who knows? But these are obviously two different tools. So this is one of those like contouring tools that are supposed to help with puffiness and you know lymphatic drainage and things like that. It feels cold to the touch and sometimes people keep these in the fridge. I've used one of those. I have a video on the Gua Sha Facial. Um, you know, the stone, you can check back. That was another quarantine 
I'm bored as heck in quarantine. Let me try some skincare stuff out. Videos, you know, check that out. Blast from the past, even though it was just this year. Stuff like this, I, me, myself, personally, I don't use on a regular basis because for one, am I gonna remember to use something like this all the time? No. Now, am I knocking people who use these? No, because this might, you know, some people may find a benefit in using a tool like this. Um, it may make people feel good. And I'm not trying to take away people's feelings of good, unless, you know, your feelings of good are harming others. But, you know, if you're using a, a device like this, you know, and you, you like it in your routine, fine. Um, I don't think that something like this can do a ton of harm. I think maybe you may hurt yourself more with a derma roller than you would with something like this, on average. But, I don't know, I bought, I bought this during, I'm, and I'm not gonna put it on my skin because, um, you know, I just beat my face. I have another video to film after this. It does feel kind of good. I remember when I did the gua sha uh, facial roller, not facial roller, the gua sha facial video, that it felt good and it would, to me it would be something that if I wanted to treat myself, it's not gonna be something I'm gonna do often, but if I wanted to treat myself and maybe I was going for a massage and a facial, if it made sense in that session, maybe you know, I would do the gua sha because it just felt really good, but Leave me a comment below, let me know. Are you into like these like facial roller tools, the derma roller? Um, talk to me about what you do below. All right, next up. I went fuck ham crazy buying stuff from The Ordinary. And I even have a couple more things that are in the medicine cabinet that has no medicine in it um, <laughs> that I bought recently. But those things are things that I'm like, yeah, I'm actually gonna use those. Um, I bought these things with good intention. So I wanted to do a video on acids. And although I am typically someone who, I'll go for the brands where, you know, things are already formulated. I like multitasking products. Um, I don't necessarily have time to be like, all right, I wanna use this for brightening, this for hydration. Like, just put it all in one thing and, and give it to me, you know? So while I love the idea of a brand like The Ordinary, especially for people who, you know, have the patience to read through ingredients, who want to learn, who want to, you know, see what goes with what, what proper things go with what, um, The Ordinary does do, does have a lot of literature on their website on what goes with what and their directions. So if you're someone who has the patience to read and learn and, you know, try things out and maybe do like small patch tests, then I think The Ordinary is an amazing brand for you. Uh, but for those who just kind of want to just grab something and put it on their face and kind of treat skincare products like when you get a new TV and you don't read the directions, I wouldn't say that The Ordinary would be the brand for you because you, you, do, need to, you do need to slow down and kind of read and know what you're doing with a brand like this. Um, but anyway, I wanted to do a video on acid, so I wound up getting lactic acid, the 5%, and the mandelic acid uh, 10%. Now these are typically more of the gentle of the alpha hydroxy acids, especially if you kind of, you know, compare them to something like a glycolic acid. And my idea was to, for like a week, use one on one side of my face to see if I noticed any difference between the two. And I started it one night, you know, one on one side and one on the other. And I'm like, oh, okay, I can I can kind of, you know, somewhat feel the difference in the texture and how it feels in my skin. And then on the second night, I couldn't remember which side. <laughs> I couldn't remember which side I put what. And then by night three, I was like, F it, <laughs> scrapped. The good thing though, is that the ordinary products aren't very expensive. So I didn't like waste a ton of money with, <laughs> with doing that little experiment that didn't really go very far. Another thing that I got, I got the Ascorbyl Glucoside Solution 12%. Um, and this was something that I was supposed to compare to the vitamin C serums that I use during the day in my routine. I think I might have used this four times <laughs> and then got distracted because something else came in and you know I was like, oh, let me try that. Or maybe I was partnering with an another brand on something else. 
So <laughs> there's that. I also was like, oh, you know what? Let me see. Um, because at the time, I think I was liking, there were two hyaluronic acid serums that I liked. There was one, I can't think of the name of the brand, but I'll pop it up here on the screen. It, it was a very expensive hyaluronic acid that I got in PR. And then Peter Thomas Roth has the hyaluronic cloud. I can't remember what percentage hyaluronic acid. I'll link it below so you can get all that information. And I was like, oh, I wonder how the Ordinary's Hyaluronic Acids compare. So I wound up with the Hyaluronic Acid 2% plus B5. B5 is Panthenol, which is a, you know, a hydrator. And then the Marine Hyaluronics. And I was like, a lot of times it was mostly like, I don't know what you want to get, even though I'm sitting here reading this. Um, you know what, let me get both because these products do sometimes tend to sell out. So I'm gonna get both and then I'll figure out which ones I'll use for my trial when, when it gets here. And I use the hyaluronic acid one more than I'd use the marine um, hyaluronics. Like, you know, there's a little amount of <laughs> that used up, but for the most part, and am I gonna go back and, and, and want to like, go back and revisit those ideas that I had, like with the acids, you know, trying the lactic and the mandelic and the ascorbyl glucoside solution, 12%, and then the hyaluronics. Nope. <laughs> the time has already passed. All right, next up. Now this I'm not gonna quite, you know, give myself an L on just yet because I just got these and I can, I can still, I can, we can still figure out which one of these we're gonna actually use in our routine. So I got the Lotion P50 and then the Lotion P50 Pigment 400. Now the reason why I got both is because at the time I didn't really have any, like, if I had hyperpigmentation, it was that little thing that was on my nose from when I had the um, big cystic pimple and I was using a prescription medication for that. So I was like, you know what? I'm probably, you know, done with that. Although there's still a little bit of a spot there. So at the time I didn't have any hyperpigmentation, but then I was like, well, what if I wind up getting something like in a month or two from now, and then I'm gonna wish that I had that. So <laughs> I wound up getting the Lotion P50 and the Pigment 400. The P50 is more for, you know, the one for oily skin, and this one is geared more towards hyperpigmentation. I will list because the print here is quite quite small. <laughs> I will list on the screen the, like actually right here. So up here will be the acids, the main acids in the pigment 400. And then up here will be the main acids that are in the P50. So make sure you check out the screen to see what the main acids are because, ooh, this, this is like, like seriously, who, who, who's supposed to be able to read that? Who? <laughs> anyway, so, now I actually have a little bit of hyperpigmentation um, on my ch on my cheek. Um, I was doing laser hair, which I, I will do a video on hopefully soon, because I'm not quite sure if I need to do maybe one more laser hair session, because I want to be able to be done with laser hair before we kind of get into it, into it with a video. But for the first time, I actually had a reaction and I got some folliculitis around my um, chin area. This not my chin. Yeah, my chin, my jawline area. Folliculitis is when, you know, the hair under the skin is a little inflamed and, you know, you might see a little bump. I know it wasn't acne because it looked very different from the type of acne that I had. And plus I had just had laser hair. So I'm like, this is probably connected. So I, you know, text Dr. Michelle Henry, who called in a prescription for me. I used a prescription for about a week, it went away. But then I have a little, you know, some little bits of hyperpigmentation there. Now here's the thing. So I have a medication called Cispera that I'm like, oh, this might be something good to try out because a lot of dermatologists are raving about it. And I got it actually at a dermatologist event that I went to early in the year. And I'm like, let me try this out. So I don't like having too many actives in my routine, especially, you know, strong ones. So I wouldn't want to, you know, I don't like to do the most in my routine because a lot of times you do the most and it can lead to bigger issues. So I'm not quite sure what's what, you know, I don't exfoliate my skin every single day. So putting these in my routine, maybe once or twice a week may not be so bad while I'm using the Cispera. But then I'm also like, am I really going to continue using that? So to be continued, make sure you subscribe to this channel and turn the notification bell on 
to get more skincare updates and knowledge and products and professionals because we have dermatologists and estheticians that come through the channel every now and then so make sure you subscribe and hit that notification bell all right so that is <laughs> it right those are all the products that I so-called <laughs> wasted my money on during quarantine because I thought that I would have been churning out so many different types of skincare content during quarantine, which I did. I did actually churn out a lot of content. I think what messed me up is that I thought we were going to be in lockdown <laughs> through the summer. And as soon as they started opening New York City in phases, I was like, <laughs> <laughs> Let me get outside safely, of course. You know, I would go out maybe once or twice a week and then, you know, quarantine at home. And then, you know, just like a little dabble of fun. But now things are a little bit more open and I'm not indoors as much. So it's kind of hard to, you know, get into all the skin can stuff. Anyway, now it is your turn to do the talking. Please leave a comment below. Let me know. <laughs> what skincare products you have wasted your money on during quarantine or, or whatever time. Just let me know that in the comments. Get all chitty chatty. Follow me on social. The links will be in the description box and I will see you fine folks in my next video. Bye guys.